What's up everybody? This is another day of open surgery on my CR10S Pro. What did I find out? First of all, these rails right here towards the back, they're a little bit narrow. How did I find this out? There's a few rollers inside here. So if I move the dolly back and forth right here, the back roller right here, okay, the back roller right here, all I have to do is put my hand on it and it's very easy and it just slides without twisting, without revolving. If I move it towards the back, it becomes harder and harder. I have to press harder on the roller itself to maintain it without spinning. Therefore, these must be narrowing. There's no other explanation. So if they narrow, they put a lot more pressure for the on the rollers inside. Now let's try this roller right here, the one here. I have to press very very hard and towards the back the same thing I can't hold it so that is one of the issues that I may be having with it in addition there's a few bumps along the way on this dolly right here right now I loosened all the rollers everywhere I took it apart this is major surgery I wanted to check everything and everything <laughs> under the sun before I print another cube because I am close to building a house out of these cubes so I wanted to check everything and I wanted to see what's the story with the fuzz and I think the fuzz is because the rollers may have been too tight in addition I took apart the head I took it off the rail I wanted to understand how to tighten this screw right here I'm not sure what it was before but I think these two screws are here with the rollers in the back. Well, this roller is not visible. Maybe from here. No, I don't think it is. So with these rollers in the back, I think the screws, if you tighten them down, downward, or at least if you tighten them downward and you look, you take this off the rail, you leave everything behind and you look and you measure and you twist, you tighten them down. It gives you like maybe a few hundreds of a millimeter maybe 0.1 millimeter downward and with this guy right here it seems to be much easier now to tighten the head on the rail with the offset knot it is much easier to tighten this because obviously there's nothing on this head one other problem i may have caused this one right here you, you see this this blob right here apparently it is because of the space in between this tube and the nozzle so i may have caused this because i did not know what i was doing so i took it apart and then when i put it back probably i didn't uh, make sure it's flush with the nozzle so there's no blob i noticed this problem because i could not retract the filament anymore out of the printer so i noticed that problem after i disassembled the head and reassembled it and i kind of suspected that it may be my fault for not putting it correctly together this problem was caused by me but i don't think this problem affects the faces on the xyz calibration cubes and uh, i think it's more with the mechanics so i needed to take all the belts off so i don't feel the motors grinding wh while i'm uh moving these up and down i wanted to see how smooth they are while they move up and down because with the belts on i couldn't feel how smooth these travel along the rail so i wanted to like take it apart completely to get kind of zero in to the problem itself before I start saying a bunch of things unknowingly. So I took it apart and to the best of my ability, I tried to figure out what is going on. Like if I tighten this bed, I put everything on it. And if I tighten it, I feel a series of bumps along the way as it travels back and forth or on the Y axis, I feel a series of bumps. So I kind of loosened up the screws in such a manner that it doesn't have any rattling in it, but it, it doesn't allow for those bumps that it feels along the way to transfer that vibration into the print and kind of shake the walls and against the nozzle while it's deploying the molten plastic so i have to put it back together so i can understand if what i did and how i loosened it right now 
will allow me to print better. And I think uh, my rollers have a little bit of damage in them. And in order to get a better quality of a print, I may have to change them. But yet again, I am not 100% sure. These are just assumptions due to my limited experience. Granted, I've only been doing this for a month. I would say that I am a tiny touch mechanically inclined. Just a tiny bit right there. And I want to say that I, I've been trying my best to figure this thing out. And... I may have uh, came up short. What I have to do is cut this Capricorn tube because I need to have it flush against the nozzle. The problem is I don't have the right equipment or apparatus or the jig to cut it because my hand could be sliding back and forth. It, can't, it will not be perfectly perpendicular and the tube might not rest perfectly flat on the surface and the surface itself may not be a hundred percent true and right here on camera snip <laughs> so now i have to like retract the filament what in rome why not let's cut this thing down manually and deal with the problems later i'm gonna try to be as precise as a human can possibly be so i cut a little sliver of it Oh, okay, so I'm going to walk it in, basically like a sniper walks in on the target. So I am going to walk it in gently and try to be precise. Now, the problem is that the blade itself seems to be warping a little bit under the pressure. You can see, oh my God, look at that. <laughs> oh, terrible. Let's see, can I do this? Jesus, I mean, I can't see it from here that it's like not nowhere near close to where it's supposed to be. And uh, it's ridiculous. I'm going to end up cutting the entire tube by the end of this session. Yeah, this is not going to work. Uh, oh, God. It is terrible. That's why I was afraid. By the way, this thing is slippery like uh, you can't you can barely like it's self-lubricating or something i guess that's why it's so it's so sought after that's the word mm, definitely i can see it from a mile away that this is not straight so that was my fear i'm gonna end up cutting this whole tube like all the way back to where it came from and uh i need a better knife i need something to make this work <laughs> sandwich anyone i've been cutting this thing left and right and too narrow or too wide and i cannot get it right it's like the archer's paradox if uh, if you didn't know i'm gonna just give you a quick snippet basically if the arrow is too thick or too thin the arrow is gonna veer left or right so the arrow with the pressure from the string they have to match that's the archer's paradox now as a child i used to make bow and arrows so just as the archer trying to shoot an arrow with the right pressure and the right thickness to go straight and hit the bullseye i'm having exactly the same problem but you know cutting manually this thing uh, some uh, missing teeth here <laughs> after many 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 tries i still don't have it uh i need bobby flay in here one idea i had was to put the capricorn tube through this device and then just slice it like that and this seems to be a flush cut as you can see here it is a flush cut almost but if the cut is not right we can push it out just a tiny tad and then we can do another slice. Well, there's the problem. I can't see from that other side. So I have to kind of put the cutter right there on the plastic and then just done. This creates a little bit of a, uh, unevenness if you look into the tube directly. Yeah, they're right there. If you look right there, the cut is not even so we need like some sort of a like one slice cutter or something like that uh, manually doesn't work uh, let's hope that the pressure applied will seal it but that's one way to cut it uh, I thought of it after like ruining it so that's another thing with these manual devices so I'm waiting here for it to I'm waiting for it damn it 
I'm waiting for it to heat up so I can take this apart. Oh, it's hot. I want to take this apart and clean it up and try to put this stupid cable and make sure it gets flush with the nozzle. Only issue is the old nozzle has plastic in it and is not connected to this thing. So now, well, let's see. Let's try this on camera, see if I get burned. Use the new nozzle, put the printer together, see if it ever will print anything of any acceptable quality. After taking the printer apart and literally taking it completely apart bit by bit, releasing the axes from the motors and feeling if they smoothly move around without any rattling has done some, has improved the print quality. Now. I am not sure if my rollers have a problem because there are still artifacts on the printouts. But if you look at these two here, these were printed before I took the printer apart. And you can see the, the ringing, it's extreme. These two were printed with a 0.3 millimeter nozzle immediately after I reassembled the printer. And we can still see problems on the X axis and on the Y when there is something on the Y axis. But on this one, there's lesser problems as well with, with this one. But here I already started adjusting the rollers, trying to tune it better. But I think by just a faint smidge of adjusting one of the knobs or the offset knots will offset the print. As you can see the in the middle right there, there's a groove will offset the print but it will my offset the entire setting and then you will not get the same quality these are the actual this is where i i was adjusting it as it was printing you can see that groove in the middle it's throughout the entire print so i was adjusting the knob right there in the middle and this uh i mean these printouts are better now compared with these one right here these ones right here so as well as uh this one this is one of them that is today and I think this is the one, yeah. This one is today and basically these two have infill and they're printed with the 0.3 millimeter setting or 0.3 millimeter nozzle. If we look at the X's, I, I started adjusting it after the first one, trying to get a better print. This was the first one and it seems to have a almost smooth wall with a few artifacts. And this is the last print. I printed today that last print right there that's the one that doesn't have as many artifacts as these ones here but I was playing around with the settings and this one this one here is the previous to last and I was trying to see if I can improve it but the X faces they seem to just go crazy the walls without anything on them they seem to be a little bit smoother but the the 0.3 millimeter nozzle test is not conclusive because the nozzle itself it's it, it's better so i mean it's it produces smaller string and obviously it will be fainter differences compared with the 0.4 so i try to i cleaned up the 0.4 and obviously tuning the printer and the rails and the rollers on the rails like without the belts remove the belts completely just to feel the smoothness help now i'm not sure if there is something with the actual right z-axis rod because now i see it kind of making a little a little hump or a little hop when it's like close to the bed when it's doing the leveling so i'm not sure if there's something in the groove of the rod itself or if there is something in the or if there is a bent or i'm not sure what it is there but that's what i noticed after i put it back together and it's an ongoing tuning process thanks for tuning in on the cr10s pro my cr10s pro please subscribe maybe not willingly should i force you <laughs>